So how do you go from PC leadership hopeful to member of Rachel Notley's caucus? What does her floor crossing say about the future of the PCs? Joining me now, a new NDP MLA, Sandra Jansen in Edmonton. Good to see you. Nice to see you, Rosemary. Okay, so explain this for people because <laughs> this is a this is a hard one uh, for yep. people who are cynical to yep. to see you uh, vying to be the leader of a party you believed in. We've talked about it before, uh, and now yeah. you're a member of the NDP caucus. How, how how do you square those things? Well, you know, I think the months of harassment uh, certainly were. You know, you can say a lot of it's part and parcel of of the the thrust and cut of of uh, campaigning. But there was a tone to it that was really offensive, very gendered, very misogynistic, very threatening, and uh, and really culminated in the weekend where we went to the policy conference. And I went there hoping to talk about policy, policy that I had shaped uh, on my campaign. And uh, when I stood up that Saturday night to talk about policy, it seemed like no one was listening. But the dog whistle politics uh, of the far right uh, were applauded uh, at that policy conference. and. And uh, so that in itself was disturbing. Uh, I, was, I was chased down the hallway by anti-abortion protesters. Uh, certainly uh, there was a good segment of, of very socially conservative folk there who were trying to put through policy that essentially outed gay kids in school. Uh, by the time I left that uh, policy conference, I, I just felt that this was not my party anymore. And the, and the support for Jason Kenney at that event uh, was pretty uh, substantial. There were a lot of federal conservatives in the room. There was a lot of support from that area. And, uh, you know, and, and by the end of the weekend, I thought to myself, you know, I, I don't think this is my fight anymore. You know, the, the fact is that there is a real push on uh, to unite the right and to take Alberta back to a conservative place that uh, really has no room for progressives. And I had to make my decisions accordingly. So, but did you not feel that or see that happening before you went to that policy? I mean, did you not recognize your party just all of a sudden? Or do you think this is all Jason Kenney's fault? Where, where, where is this from? Where is it coming from? Well, this is definitely a narrative uh, from Kenney and his supporters that uh, was very evident that weekend. And I think leading up to it, you know, when we go out and campaign, we're surrounded by like-minded people, people who join our team, people who believe in us, and that was a lot of the narrative. And so when I went out to talk to the wonderful progressives in the PC party, uh, I, I really assumed that they would be able to hold the day. Uh, at, at the end of the day, you know, the direction that Jason Kenney is taking the progressive conservative party is an extremely disturbing one. It has. It has a lot of parallels to what's happening in the U.S. with a rank disregard for women's rights, women's reproductive rights, LGBTQ uh, people. And, and I think, uh, you know, I had to make a decision accordingly. Where is my voice best used going forward in the future? But what, why did you then have to go all the way to the NDP? Because I understand you, you're a progressive, but you're still a conservative. And I don't think anyone would say that the NDP government in Alberta is, is anything close to representing its conservative values. So how, how could you get all that way over there in a period of, you know, nine days or something? Well, you know, certainly I, I think for those people who know me and, and as Jason pointed out on many occasions that I voted with the government on some very strong social policy. And so I was quite happy with the social policy they were bringing right. forward. On the fiscal side, I had concerns. And uh, when I sat down with the Premier in a meeting, I talked about those concerns. I talked about things that I felt were important in the policy that I brought forward. She was interested in my policy, interested in having further discussions about it, respectful of my place. And she said her tent was big enough for a fiscal conservative. Uh, that was an extremely uh, uh, important message for me. And I think going forward that I have a place to play uh, in the government, uh, a, a wonderful warm welcome, incredibly supportive colleagues, and, and an opportunity to talk about the things that are important to me and, and, and to people in the province. And, uh, and I'm being given that opportunity at her table. So the tent in, in the NDP government was big enough for me. In the PC government, it was definitely not. Uh, it w w any promise of a cabinet job at some point down the road? Or? There were no promises made except respect. And I'm telling you uh, that that was an extremely important message. And uh, it was a very uh, welcome thing to hear. Uh, that uh, I have a place at the table, I have respect, and the kind of 
uh, behavior that has been leveled at me and other female candidates uh, certainly has no place in the NDP caucus. And uh, that's very comforting to me moving forward. Well, I was going to, I'll just end on this. I, how much of this was about the lack of response from your party? I know there was at one point you were hoping from a call from Rick McIver. I don't know if it ever came. It, was it also in part the way that nobody sort of came to your defense or stood up for you? It wasn't a welcoming uh, environment. And, you know, one of the reasons I made the decision I made is because I have work to do and I don't want to get mired down in the, in the politics of personality. I want to work for the province. I want to move forward and work on some strong pieces of policy that are important to me. And uh, that's the work I want to do. And, and the politics of personality have completely taken over the party and the caucus. And it is not a welcoming place for women, certainly, uh, in this province right now. And that's been made plainly evident. Uh, and you think your constituents will buy into this? Well, certainly the reaction's been mixed, but I've gotten a lot of wonderful response from people. The reason, you know, there were only two women re-elected in this province in 2015, myself and Rachel Notley. I think that really says something. And the folks that I met at the door is by the thousands when I door knocked in that last election. Uh, we're happy with the work I did, and that work doesn't change going forward. Okay. Sandra Jansen, thank you for your time. Interesting Take politics care. in Alberta, as always. Thanks. Yes.